Ciao, mabuhay. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word Incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are on the second Sunday of Easter, also celebrated as Divine Mercy Sunday. In today's Gospel, the risen Lord breathes the Holy Spirit on His disciples and sends them to forgive sins. Jesus wants His disciples to participate in and pass God's gift of reconciliation and mercy to others. Thomas, however, is absent during the recent Lord's visit, so he could not believe the testimony of his fellow disciples. But Jesus sees through our mind and heart, brothers and sisters, and so he visits them again. This time, he shows Thomas his wounds. Then seeing that the risen one is indeed the crucified Jesus, Thomas proclaims, my Lord and my God. How about you? Do you see Jesus triumphant over death in his wounds and in the wounds of the poor and those who suffer? By seeing and touching his wounds, we can proclaim him as Lord and God. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The Word of the Lord. Become the corner 
second reading. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by Him. In this way we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey His commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord Jesus' Glorious Wounds As we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, which is also called Divine Mercy Sunday, we continue to contemplate the victory of the risen Lord over death and all the causes of death, especially sin. But Divine Mercy Sunday is quite special because we are given an insight into how our Lord exercises His triumph. And it is through healing. But how does He heal? How does healing triumph in the risen Lord? He heals through His glorious wounds. By His wounds we are healed. The victory of the wounded yet risen Lord. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we are presented a description of the early Christian community, the first believers in Jesus Christ as Lord and Messiah. And they came to faith through the testimony of the apostles. According to the first reading, the power of the preaching of the apostles you know, was very much felt by the hearers, and they became a community of believers. We know also that the first disciples were wounded people. Many of them were sick, but many of them were wounded by poverty, wounded also by the uh, system that kept some classes of peoples or some types of work as outcast. So the disciples of Jesus, those who were given the grace to respond to the good news of his crucifixion and also his resurrection were a wounded people and a wounded community. The first reading gives us a wonderful description. They who were wounded because of poverty, no, some of them or all of them were ready to be wounded again. How? They sold whatever they had. And whatever they earned by selling their property, they shared with one another. They provided for the needs of each other. And so there is no needy person among them. They were willing to be wounded in order to heal the wounds of others. This is the victory of the resurrection. 
the one who was wounded but rose from the dead, now addresses the wounds of peoples. And his disciples were willing to be wounded in order to address the wounds of others. A wonderful, wonderful manifestation of the victory of Jesus. In the second reading, St. John tells us that we are all children of God. And then he uses an expression, who is the victor? Who is the triumphant one? Who? In our world today, who usually wins? Well, those who have money, those who have weapons, those who have influence. And if you want to win, well, you better be wise in uh, machinations, in manipulation. No, it's a matter of strategy, using power in order to subjugate those who cannot wield the same power. That's how victory is won in our world. But St. John tells us the victor in this world from the eyes of faith is the one who believes in Jesus, the crucified and risen one. And the Jesus that we believe in came through water and blood. So the one who was wounded from whose side that was pierced came water and blood. The symbols of baptism and the Eucharist, which for us are sacraments of the victory over sin and individualism. In the risen Lord, wounded yet risen, we have victory. And we have to believe in that. We have to profess faith and live by that through love. Love wounds, but love also heals. Oh, thanks to the glorious wounds of our risen Lord. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to John On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? 
Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus' glorious wounds. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, we have been reflecting on how our risen Lord exercises His victory over sin and death. And it is through healing. But the healing comes through His wounds. The wounds of the Crucified One now made glorious in His risen body. That's a principle of Easter. The wounds of Jesus on the cross have become glorious and have become the source of triumph, especially through healing and mercy. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the community of the early disciples of Jesus who responded to the preaching of the apostles, they were wounded, they were poor, some of them were marginalized. Yet their faith in the risen Lord made them sensitive to the wounds of others. They were willing to be wounded also. They sold their properties. And instead of earning you know, what they rightfully uh, could claim, they shared with others so that there is no needy person in their midst, ready to be wounded in order to help the wounded, a mark of an Easter community. St. John in the second reading tells us that the victor in the world is not the one with weapons, with money, and uh, with the corrupt ways, no. But it is the one who has faith in the Jesus who was wounded, from whose side flowed water and blood. The regenerating power of baptism and the Eucharist, making every believer an active agent of love, love of God and love of neighbor. Look, faith in the wounded one generates love, but no one loves without being ready to be wounded in order to heal the wounds of others. In the gospel for today, we have an account of the risen Lord's coming to the disciples who were hiding in a room out of fear. And Jesus came to them. He showed them the wounds the wounds that he still possesses. Now, this is an affirmation that he is really the one who was crucified. Yet, in his risen state, he continues bearing those wounds. Thomas. Thomas was not with them. But we see Thomas uh, in, in the Gospels. Thomas wanted to follow Jesus on the cross. His image of Jesus was the one who would die on the cross. So when the disciples told him that they had seen him, he said, I wanted to see his wounds and put my hand in his wounds. Because his, I, his image of Jesus was the crucified one. And Jesus appeared to him. So Jesus affirmed to Thomas, that he was really the crucified, bearing the wounds, but now risen. In his risen state, his wounds remain. In his glorious body, the wounds have become glorious. So when you look at the interaction between the risen Lord and the disciples and Thomas, there was a lot of healing. Fear was addressed with peace. Their humiliation was addressed with a new mission and the spirit given to them. 
and the fixation of Thomas on some ideas was healed with the confession of faith, my Lord and my God. See how the glorious wounds of the Lord can heal. This is part of Easter. The healing that comes when wounds, the wounds of the Lord are shown to people. Monsignor Thomas Halleck invites all of us to continue, continuously see and behold and touch the wounds of the risen Lord in the wounds of our brothers and sisters, the poor, the homeless, the hungry, the victims of war, the refugees. They are wounded. But do we see and touch Jesus' wounds in them? We should also see the wounds of those who oppress others. Very often, those who claim power are hiding their wounds. Can we enable them also to see the wounds of Jesus so that their wounds would be healed and they will not oppress others? Are we willing to look at our own wounds, the wounds that we often deny? And because we deny them, we become self-righteous, condemning the wounded rather than healing them. Remember, the risen Lord did not eliminate the wounds of His crucifixion. And by His glorious wounds, the wounds have acquired a new meaning and mission. By His wounds, the wounded are healed. The Word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. Last week, we began our series by reflecting on the Easter moments of the three disciples who went to the empty tomb. In the experience of Mary of Magdala, an Easter moment comes in being sent by the risen Lord to proclaim the good news of His resurrection. For the beloved disciple, an Easter experience happens in the memory of how Jesus revealed Himself to us in the past, His goodness in relating with us and desiring our company. Lastly, in Peter's experience, the good news of Easter becomes more palpable in the Lord's gift of chances for new life. Today, let us learn from the experience of Thomas. When his fellow disciples shared with him that they have seen the Lord he did not easily believe them, saying, Thomas wanted to see for himself. He was convinced that Jesus needed to be crucified. So the risen Lord did not take it against him. He knew that humans have a tendency to question uh, claims or reports of extraordinary events. And the risen Lord responded to Thomas's hesitation with a visit, not to scold him, but to strengthen him and to affirm that the risen one is in fact the crucified one. The Lord assured him that the testimony of his fellow disciples who had previously seen him and his wounded hands and side, can be trusted. An Easter moment, then, is an experience of being brought out of the darkness of fixed ideas and skepticism into the light of faith. Thomas needed assurance and the risen Lord presented Himself, His wounded hands and side, 
so Thomas could see and touch them and come to full belief. Touching the wounds of the Lord, Thomas confessed, That's another Easter moment to proclaim the crucified, now risen one as Lord and God. And in Thomas's experience, we learn that it is the grace of the resurrection that enabled him to profess who Jesus is to him, his Lord, his God, and his confession of faith is ours too. Friends, Recall moments when you were led to faith in Jesus, crucified and risen as our Lord and God. St. Thomas, pray for us. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, how have your wounds brought you new life? Paano ka dinala sa bagong buhay ng iyong mga sugat? The second point is, how can the wounded people be agents of justice and peace rather than of vengeance and violence? Paano magiging daan ng katarungan at kapayapaan ang mga sugatang tao sa halip na daan ng paghihiganti at karahasan. Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.